Douglas here from WeakNet Labs. In this video demonstration, we're going to be going over how to create a Splunk panel and a dashboard and even an alert for SQL injection attempts to our locally installed web application service, Apache 2. Now this is part two of a two-part mini-series on up and running with Splunk and WeakNet Linux. So if you haven't watched the first video, I'd recommend watching that first. And okay, so let's dive right in. It ended off here where we were able to Put, we extracted fields, the attacker IP and the date here, and we were able to pull this data out uh, using a simple search here. So let's do, let's create a table. Let's do table and we'll do attacker underscore IP and what else should we add into the table? This is going to produce the events as tabular output, uh, you know, like kind of like a pretty display that we're going to be using. So let's see, we also want to do ID because I believe the ID is what is being attacked here. Oh, field six. Uh, let's see, I believe we added URI accidentally as the, um, we could see this right here. This is the HTTP response code. Uh, so we're going to do field six. We're going to use field six, but we're going to rename that first. Let's go back up into, let's see here extract new fields and we're going to select one of these to use as a sample okay so we're going to hit next and it's going to break this up and we can use a regular expression or we can use delimiters and because i want to get uh just this part right here the actual uri i'm going to write my own regular expression so let's go to next and let's see Field name, we're going to put URI sample. Let's just do URI sample since we accidentally created a URI of the HTTP response over here for some reason in the previous video. So great, look at this. This worked perfectly. I didn't even have to write the regular expression. How cool is that? It just automatically did it for me. And we hit next, 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 next. And URI samples should be added now. So let's go back to our search and reporting app as we were showing in the previous video. And let's do, we do have search history. So we can actually just run the same search that we uh, just ran. In the last 24 hours, I made this video this part one of this video yesterday so I'm just going to do all time which is something you really shouldn't do but we have such a small amount of data that it doesn't really matter okay so we have URI sample BAM so we're going to add that now into our table so let's do a table attacker underscore IP and we're going to do URI underscore sample and what else do we want we probably want the date also so let's just add the date uh, here and let's see what this returns. See, it's a nice, pretty tabular output. So now let's create this as a panel, a dashboard panel. Since we do not have any existing dashboards, we're creating to create a new dashboard, and we're going to call this Web Application Attacks. And we're going to, as a description, we're going to call this the scene for Apache 2 slash MySQL. Since we're doing MySQL injection, uh, let's share this uh, dashboard panel within this app and hit save and let's now view our dashboard. So we have now created a new dashboard and a new panel for the dashboard. If you want to edit the panel, you hit edit here. You could change the search here. You could change the, um, you probably can't change the format since this isn't really statistical data or anything, but let's just add a title here. SQL injection attempts. Oopsie daisy. Let's get rid of that there. And there's no, we don't really need a subtitle. Let's save that and wow, now we have a nice dashboard. So if we list all of our dashboards, we see the two that actually came with the installation of Splunk, these two here, and then we have our own. So let's click on our own. And now every time we click on this, it's going to be live and it's going to show all of the new attacks. So let's see if our, Apache instance is still running and it is so let's do okay so we're going to do what ID equals and then we're going to do this or one equals 
one. In our MySQL comments, we're going to write this again, just so we, we can uh, check the URI is in fact going into the log and we are in fact seeing it in our panels in real time. So we'll do testing SQL injection for get parameter. All right. So we hit that uh, URL twice with that URI. So now when we refresh this search here, this panel, we'll see the two new right here. We have this one, union select, and we have this one right here. Let's see, go by date, here they are, these two up here. Or percent 20 equals one. And we, again, we hit that one twice, and then this is one that I put in as I was testing. So, uh, now we have this panel. So what does this panel do? Well, let's change, we can, what we can do is change the search to be a real-time search. Let's go to edit and then search. And then our time range, use time picker. Uh, all time, and let's do relative, or let's do real time. And let's do a one minute window and hit apply. And this means that it's going every minute it's going to pull out that data and it's going to show the data ever, for every minute. And we see that it's already wave phased out for the last minute that we did. So um, I believe this hashtag symbol right here is screwing up with our field extraction. So we would have to write another one for that and be far less specific on what we want to actually s extract. So let's do uh, percent one equals one. This is a test and hit enter. If we go back to our application here, uh, we see that it is in fact waiting for data and bang, see in almost real time, it's every minute it's going to pull out new data. So this right here is what we just hit. So now we have a, an actual monitoring application, which is kind of like a seam for web application and we're, we're just searching again simply for very primitive SQL injection uh, threats and attempts uh, coming from anywhere basically. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to mention is that I cannot actually show how to create a Splunk alert and that is simply due to my license. Uh, my license only restricts me to uh, creating the dashboards and panels and doing very minimal things. I'm guessing this is because there's a lot of back-end services or logic that uh, the Splunk Enterprise version comes with that the free version does not just for support reasons or something like that. So. What we're going to just stick simply with the dashboards and the panels for now, and we're going to add something else to our web application attacks. Now, this web application attacks dashboard only has SQL injection attempts. Now, what if we want to search for people who are attempting or searching for um, cross-site scripting, for instance? Well, I already hit this right here, and I added some cross-site scripting logic here with script tags and alert 1337. And what we're going to do now is simply create a search and again create a panel for the dashboard using that search. So let's do index equals main and we're going to do I let's actually just start off with a regex and we're going to do ID equals and we have uh, let's see script and alert. This is a common way to test uh, cross-site scripting, and this is exactly how I was able to... Oops, I'm sorry. You actually can't do that. So let's do this here. This is exactly how I tested it. I basically just did alert and then a number to see if it works. Once it works, then people expand off of that and make it a lot more complex and even do obfuscation of cross-site scripting. So again, this is very primitive and very easy, just like our previous SQL injection attempt. So we now have this here. Now, one thing we note is that the source type is Apache 2 Access. Let's break this out here. And we, we see the attacker IP address, we see the date, and we see the URL, URI sample right there. So let's create another table. Oops. Attacker underscore. Here we go. Same as our previous search and see how it lays it all out in this tabular form very pretty for us we're going to save this as a report 
and we're going to, well, I'm sorry, not a report, we're going to be saving this as a dashboard panel. An existing panel, and now that we have ours, uh, we're going to select it here, Web Application Attacks, and if we fill in this panel title thing right here, which is optional, it'll actually create the title for us. So let's do SQL, or I'm sorry, cross-site scripting attempts, and we're going to do an inline search, no action, and the pretty statistics table. Hit save, and we're going to view our dashboard, and now our web application attacks dashboard now allows us to monitor SQL injection attempts and cross-site scripting attempts that are coming into our local web application service right here, this Apache 2. So I hope you find these videos enjoyable and I hope you find them informative. Again, what all we did was set up Splunk and we used it to monitor the web application service that comes with the default uh, installation of WeakNet Linux, if you've installed all the updates that is. And we searched specifically for very primitive uh, get parameter uh, command injection basically for SQL injection and for JavaScript injection which is cross-site scripting. Thank you.